Hello everyone, I have just did a quick bench test of this conversion project. I am converting an old ELDBD 300 watt class D integrated amp into a 150 watt class AB amp. I'm going to call it a ELDAB. It doesn't sound very original, but I couldn't figure out anything else to call them, so I call it ELDBAB. Doing a conversion project like this is literally fun and I have expected some problem and I did and solved them and didn't take too long to solve. Um, I've been doing conversion project like this for a long time. Some tricks that um, that I've learned uh, in the past 20-25 uh, years. Um, I'm, I'm still surprised that uh, there's a lot of myth out there that people don't know and keep doing the same thing over and over again and getting the uh, not satisfying result. But two things um, I would like to talk about in this video, and it's almost like an audio file myth or a marketing buzzword. They always like to say the shortest signal path and the shortest or lowest impedance ground point. Um, both of those things are not necessary true in real life of course you want to get at the shorter signal path but in reality it's almost impossible in a lot of cases especially conversion project like this because first of all the main reason of doing converting project like this is to save costs um, you don't want to buy a brand new amp so we're saving the chassis we're saving part of this uh, front end in this case the tube the original gain stage warm control control and circuit filament supply and part of the uh, output stage power supply. I took out the original class D amps in this middle section to make room for this class AB output stage. And the original ELDBD have a switch to switch this 6SN7 tube in and out of the signal path. In this case, we did something better. This knob is actually an adjustable knob to adjust how much tube sound you want. The tube is going to be um, continuous adjustable from zero to full get to full gain in the signal path, and then on the other side, this one is a solid state knob. It's sim very similar to uh, my model's i810 integrated amp, but this is a very small version of 810 because of the power supply, physical dimensions, uh, limitations, and all that. But it, the function is almost exactly the same. This one have a three input and a, a master one control. Back to that two things that the audio file myth as first of all the shortest signal path. Now when I did the uh, when I take over this uh, conversion uh, uh, conversion project, the first thing I insist is a separate power supply. Having a separate power supply take a lot of noise out. Therefore, it allow me to run longer signal path. In this case, it's necessary. If I'm going to build, if I'm going to take everything out everything out and build a brand new amp, relocate everything and, and move this phase splitting stage and also adjustable adjustable stage closer to this one, so I might as well build a brand new amp. But the cost is not acceptable at that point. So I did some compromise or adaptation to what we have. So take, it, take the our power supply out on the next um, into a separate box will eliminate almost all of the noise. I'm not talking about um, hissing because the hissing is mostly from the tube. It's uh, it's the humming and the uh, buzzing. Uh, in in order to eliminate ground loop, there are three pieces of umbilical cord total of ten wire from the power supply to the amp and four of those are grounds. You can have more, you can have less. Now, talk about ground. Then we go to the second audio file myth. Lowest impedance ground path. And the lowest impedance ground path is not always the shortest physical ground wire. Look at this ground wire. This is the green wire is the ground, one of the, ground, one of the many grounds inside the amp. It runs from the back to the front, and two of them running back to the output stage. 
and somebody will just say, why don't you just run one wire to here, to here, to here, it saves some wires, and physically measurement wise, physical measurement wise, it's actually shorter. Of course it's shorter, but not electrically lower impedance. There are theory and practice for that, and I guarantee if you run a piece of wire from the back to, to this, and to this, and to the front, you will measure exactly the same as almost zero ohms, but I can guarantee you're going to get a ground loop. Same as this. In order to put this here, there's only one ground path, but there's four ground paths from the power supply to the amp. Now, because of this uh, limited resource of the conversion project, and I have also put jacks on the back, this is the jack for the external capacitor for the output stage. This is the external capacitor for the tube. And then you go over this, and this is the jack for the um, input stage and also the control circuitry. The In the future, the customer can actually just plug and play external capacitor, ex external capacitor pack for upgraded amp. But I have to build this amp to the point that can accept those and ground again. They all have individual ground to a single point of this amp. And that single point is very important. When you build an amp like this, you have to pick the right ground. And doing, uh, doing the amps, the way I build the amp with all this wire, it looks a little messy because I haven't tidied it up. I even have a, a, a bunch of paper to insulate this heat sink to some uh, wire in between right now, and I need to tidy those up. But finding that right ground spot is very important, and you got to pick it right. And otherwise, you're going to have a battle of ground when you put, when you start testing, and those battles of grounds are not easy to, to, to fight, and grounds are stubborn. And when you, if you have a PC board, if you don't lay it out right to begin with, good luck to, to fix the ground. And the way I did the ground and all the wiring had hard wire, I can actually do star ground, a true star ground in PC board. It's difficult to do star ground because they have ground, ground plane. And in this case, I can do true star ground and also three dimensional ground. And it's not possible for when you do PC board. And because this uh, this conversion project is is a very low quantity, it's almost custom on every one of them. Slightly different requirement for diff from different customer. It is no point to do um, to have a standard PC board for each one. And and you know, to the point that you see the heat sink is not lining up with any of the chassis edges. Oh, because I gotta have used up all the space available space and not moving too many other pa original parts from the original amp. Otherwise, it's, it's just going to cost more to do all that. And, and instead of doing all those unnecessary things, I, th I believe the customer was just happy to have his sync like that and not going to affect the sound. He can't tell me that the heat sync going to line up with the certain star and it, it, now, now they kind of sound crooked or something. That's not happening. So when, you, when I do conversion project, there are pros and cons. Of course, there's a limited resource that will be a slight compromise. But if you do it right, it's not compromising. It's adapting. What what you, what you have and and go from there, and with those jack at the back, you can in, improve this amp to the point of equal or better than the new amp. And that's um, that's all I want to say today. Until next time, I'm signing off here. Goodbye.